who have been so impressive in the early going this season. This is a high octane offense that the Zags have brought into the 2021 season, and it's just the first game of two that you will see tonight here on ESPN after the Zags into West Virginia. How about a top five matchup? Number five, Illinois. Number two, Baylor. Outstanding talent, potential All-Americans on both teams. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Jimmy V Classic here in Charlotte in separate booths. I'm Dan Schulman. You know him. He's Jay Billis, and if that tease didn't get you, right here. This is as important a night as there is on the ESPN calendar when we honor the memory of the late Jim Valvano by supporting the V Foundation. You can go to v.org slash donate. We'll tell you all about it over the course of the evening. Let's talk a little basketball, and Jay, the Zags have been a pretty big story here in the first week of the season. High scoring, Dan. They can score from every position. They're explosive at the guard spot, and they're outstanding inside with Drew Timmy, who's one of the best, not only be one of the best players in the country, he's the best big man in the country from a scoring perspective. His footwork is magnificent. He can step away and knock down a shot. Excellent in pick and roll. This Gonzaga team is legit. And you can see some of the key returners. Jay talked about Timmy. Corey Kispert's just a bucket right now. Inside, outside, Jalen Suggs, one of the best freshmen in the country. Andrew Nemhart, formerly with Florida, got a waiver. So he is playing immediately. So they've got great guard play. But as you mentioned, Jay, Timmy, and he was really good last year. He's just getting more of an opportunity playing more minutes this year. Averaging just about 27 points per game, and his footwork is so good, not just in the post, but he can face up on a pick and roll. He can pop or he can roll to the basket. He can short roll, and then he can put it on the deck. Also a really good passer. And for West Virginia, their strength is on the inside. I mean, Miles McBride is their best player, but Oscar Shibwe and Derek Culver, their two inside guys, are going to have to work the glass and work the paint. That's where their advantage is going to be, and Derek Culver has been outstanding. He's averaging uh, over 15 points a game, 10 rebounds, three and a half offensive rebounds, and the offensive glass is going to be a determining factor for the Mountaineers. For more on this great matchup, let's go to our eyes and ears on site in Indianapolis. Once again, here's Holly Rowe. Well, Jay, you said it best. Gonzaga is as good as advertised. They've been able to score at will. And when I asked Bob Huggins today what they have to do to stop them, he said it's transition defense. They have got to, number one, take care of the basketball, not turn it over, something they didn't do well last year. And then they have got to be athletic around the glass, as you mentioned, Jay. They have been terrific in transition. 25 of their points in the first two games coming that way. They love to run. Let's see if West Virginia can stop them and make this an ugly game. Bob Huggins, affectionately known, Holly, as you well know, as the Huggy Bear. He and Mark Few, the head coach of the Gonzaga Bulldogs, are good friends. And, Jay, I think we could say with some a uh, fair bit of certainty we've got a couple of future hall of famers coaching in this game at bob huggins and mark few i don't think there's any question about that mark few just got his 600th victory and bob huggins well over 800 close to 900 they're both going to be in the naismith memorial basketball hall of fame ready for the tip of our sonic blockbuster gonzaga in white and west virginia in blue these are two teams with very high hopes coming into the season for West Virginia if they can make shots they could be an extraordinarily tough team to beat because of how they rebound the ball and how good they are defensively and there's exhibit a about how they rebound the ball well Shibwe with a little jump hook and then the immediate offensive rebound and Timmy just couldn't block him out that's how that's going to be a big determining factor in this game can Gonzaga hang with West Virginia on the glass Timmy thinking about the three, now doing more than that. The big man misses the three, and down with the rebound for the Mountaineers is Evan Matthews Jr. as you look at the starting lineup for Gonzaga. And again, Suggs, Kispert, Timmy, all off to extraordinary starts in the Zags' first two games of the season. They beat Kansas 102-90 to in the season opener and then back that up with a 23-point win over Auburn. Just ridiculous scoring potential for this Zag team. I think it's the best scoring team that Mark Hughes ever had, and he's had some amazing teams in the last 20 years. You know, the impressive part is how much talent they lost last year and the year before that, and they just keep churning out incredible teams season after season. Joel Ayayi into traffic. And the three won't go down for Anton Watson, a 6'8 sophomore from Spokane. A terrific job by Miles McBride to cut off that drive by Ayayi. McBride at the point now for the Mountaineers being guarded by Kispert. 
Kisper can play the three, the four, six, seven. He can go inside, outside, can guard some different positions. McBride gets a switch, too strong in the jumper, but another offensive rebound for West Virginia. Yeah, West Virginia's got to be alert after those offensive rebounds. They can get shots up a little quicker if Shibway can find an open man to kick it to. Those are wide open shots, tough for Gonzaga to defend. Wants a nice look inside, but Timmy misses a six-footer. West Virginia back in transition. The Zags get back inside. Eric Culver, who's off to a very good start this season, can't hit a 15-footer. Well, he hesitated. If he would have taken it right away, it would have been a, a rhythm shot. Instead, he hesitated and wound up throwing up a brick. Pittsburgh preseason All-American. Inside, Timmy, left hand, won't go down. Boy, a couple of great opportunities in the early going for Drew Timmy. He hardly ever misses those. He's shooting over 70% on the year and averaging almost 27 a game. It's ridiculous how efficient he's been. Corner three, and everything but the finish. The bounce wouldn't go down for Sean McNeil. Again, a big key for West Virginia is can they make shots? Great feed, great cut, and the basket for Joel Ayayi. That's a big that difference from this year. Suggs. Yeah, that's a big difference this year, Dan, is Jalen Suggs able to grab that rebound, grab and go, and he can run the break all by himself. So explosive and such an outstanding passer. He was Mr. Basketball and Mr. Football in the state of Minnesota. And there's Derek Culver, the lefty, knocking it down. He's averaging 15 points, 10 rebounds per game so far for the Mountaineers, who are 3-0 on the season. Coming off wins over South Dakota State, VCU, and Western Kentucky in the tournament in Sioux Falls. Culver may be a little bit unorthodox, but he gets things done. And there's Jalen Suggs. Now, how are you going to stop that? He can go either way. Go left, go right. You mentioned his football ability. Miles McBride was a heck of a quarterback in high school, too. <laughs> so two great high school quarterbacks, uh, kind of dueling point guards here with the collegiate level right now. Culver with a bit of a size advantage on Watson. Good position down low. Shibwe surrounded by five defenders, and it's out of bounds still to West Virginia. Watch this rebound here. Suggs goes in, rebounds with both hands, and he just turns, doesn't have to make an outlet, can take it the other way. And that's a, a dangerous weapon for Gonzaga. And I, I think he's the best the best recruit. He's certainly the highest rated, but I think he's the best recruit that Mark Hughes brought into Gonzaga. That's saying something. He's brought in some great players. Yeah, he came in ranked as the number six player on the ESPN 100. And when you combine him with Andrew Nemhard, who is in the game right now, number three in white, the transfer from Florida, Nemhard's a guy who would probably be starting at about 98% of Division I programs, but he's coming off the bench for Gonzaga. And there's a three for McBride. Well, he's the best player on this West Virginia team and really gets them going. Athletic, pushes it in transition. If McBride has a good scoring game, West Virginia's got a real chance to win this. Nemhard, Watson, and now another touch for Timmy. Nemhard for three. Boy, to be able to throw the ball into the post to Timmy, and ha he has the ability to score every time he touches it, and if he gets doubled, he's such a good passer. Shibwe almost behind the side of the backboard with a nice spin move, and the Mountaineers are up five. You think Shibwe was fired up for this game? Everybody's talking about Timmy and his footwork, and Shibwe is showing some pretty good footwork there himself. How about that feed from Nemhart, and how about that reverse from Suggs? And a the, the cut was so good. This really instinctive play by Jalen Suggs. And a foul on the drive. To take us to our first meeting of timeout, Gabe Osaboyan drawing the foul. Five minutes in, and West Virginia leading by three. We'll tell you a little bit more about Jalen Suggs, the outstanding freshman, when we come back. ESPN's exclusive presentation. He's just an extraordinary uh, young player, both in basketball and football. Sixth overall in the ESPN 100, as we mentioned, the highest-ranked recruit to ever come to Gonzaga. And as if that weren't enough, he was also Mr. Football in the state of Minnesota. He was a quarterback, and he's played internationally for the United States. He's got it all going for him, and he is off to a great start through his first two games. 
at the collegiate level. With more, let's send it back to Holly. Well, you see some of that football ability. He's a big, thick frame. He's able to do what he wants when he gets into the paint, but also his speed. He has been timed in the 40-yard dash, which is a typical fit football measurement, and he's a 4-5 runner in that 40-yard dash, which is a lot of speed. Also, football played a role in his recruiting visit and why he signed with Gonzaga when the guys found out after their in-gym run that he was missing football and was going to be sad to give that up. They took him out and started playing football at Gonzaga. They got a seven-on-seven -seven game going. He's like, these guys love me. This is, all, I'm all in. I love it. You know what, Jay? It seems like Mark Few's got about as good a culture going right now as any program in America. Yeah, it's interesting. I think a lot of people think that, that Mark Few and Gonzaga, Tommy Lloyd, all their recruiting, that they find these diamonds in the rough and turn them into great players. But now they're getting top-rated players. I mean, Jalen Suggs, everybody wanted him, including Ohio State football. And same thing with Drew Timmy. He was widely recruited. They're winning recruiting battles against the quote-unquote big boys, and they're getting big-time players and getting big-time results uh, as a result of their recruiting. Deuce McBride hits his second three of the night. A miss by Nemhart. A back from the Mountaineers. Up by six in the early going. A quick trigger there by Sean McNeil, and the three won't go down. But a welcome here's right there stat. for the rebound. I'm sorry, Jed. Another stat to tell you how good Suggs is. Remember, their first game was against Kansas. So who's guarding him? The reigning National Defensive Player of the Year in Marcus Garrett. And what does he do in his first ever game? He goes off for 24 points and eight assists. He's big time. I'm just surprised he didn't play baseball in high school. Very disappointing he wasn't Minnesota Mr. <laughs> baseball also. Yeah. Baseline jumper is missed, and there's a foul on Derek Culver. And at times in the early going, the big guys for West Virginia, more Shebway than Culver, have been in foul trouble here and there. And Bob Huggins wants his big guys on the court as much as possible. Well, you'd like them to avoid those fouls, but it's a bit of a catch-22. You also want them to go after every ball. And any time there's a shot that goes up, you know, West Virginia is going to position two rebounders opposite the shot. Great roll off the pick and roll. That is Umar Balo, a seven-foot red-shirt freshman from Mali. A lot of upside. Uh, playing limited minutes right now as a backup. Sat out last season an academic redshirt. Didn't play great in Fort Myers in Gonzaga's two games, but interesting. He's out there along with Timmy right now. It's a really big lineup that the Zags have up front. Well, he's going to roll every time he sets a screen, but that screen was set not in the middle of the floor and not quite on the wing, just more in the slot. And nobody picked him up on that roll to the basket. That was just beautifully done. And that big body, when it rolls, you know, you can try to tag it, but you're not going to stop it. Aaron Cook now to the game for Gonzaga, number four in white, chasing Deuce McBride around a couple of screens. And back screen, rescreen action, a lot of good movement by West Virginia. McNeil baseline elevates for a 15-footer, around and out, and another rebound for Timmy, and he's got some perimeter skills. Look at the handle. When he was little, even though he was big, when he was little, he really, uh, in youth games and practices, worked on the ball handling, worked on the perimeter skills, and you see it a lot at this level. Well, that makes him really dangerous as a, in the pick and roll because he can roll all the way to the basket, he can short roll, catch it, put it on the deck, and he can also pick and pop and knock down the shot or drive it. Hey, West Virginia Savoy knocks down a jumper. Well, they're doing a good job of attacking and attacking early. They're not waiting for the defense to get set. They're getting down the floor and trying to get the first really good shot. And Osaboyan, if he adds some offense to his amazing defense and rebounding and hustle plays, uh, he's even more valuable to West Virginia. Yeah, he's Mr. Deflection, Mr. Take a Charge, Mr. Dive on a Loose Ball, and a terrific backup for either Shibway or Culver up front. He goes to the bench right now after a couple of good minutes. You can see the numbers that he put up in their tournament championship victory over Western Kentucky over the weekend. Well, Osaboyan transferred in from Arkansas, and when West Virginia got a call saying, hey, you know, got a player for you if you're interested, and they didn't know much about him and called every SEC coach and to a person, the coaches said, this is your type of player. He will fit in well with you with what he does. He's just instant energy and never stops his motor revving. Jay, if you were to ask Bob Huggins, give me one trait in a player that you need to see before you take a guy into your program, what do you think that one trait would be? Uh, playing hard all the time. That, that he wants guys that play hard. And he gets guys that play hard. 
I, I think they look at that more than anything. Is is this guy competitive and will he play hard? Joe Chuggins, Morgantown native, West Virginia grad. Took them to the Final Four in 2010. Also took Cincinnati to the Final Four back in 1992. Gisbert thought about it, and he's got deep range. Hasn't gotten going so far tonight. Working hard to get this one off. Can't get the bounce. West Virginia is so good defensively. They just stay right with you, pressure the ball, make every pass difficult. It's hard to establish rhythm. There's a Yai in transition for the Zags. There's Kispert pulling up, and he buries the three. Corey Kispert, 24 points per game so far this year, and seven threes in the first two games of the year for the Zags. He looks like he can get a bucket just about any time he wants right now. Well, that's how Gonzaga wants to score. They want to get it down court quickly and score early before West Virginia can get their defense set. And you know, Dan, another thing that Gonzaga does really well is their development of player hair. Like when Kispert came in, he, he didn't have that kind of hair, but now he's got that Dan Dickow hair, you know, the stuff mm -hmm. that flies all over the place, and yep. they can't keep control of it. That, that wasn't the way he came in from, from Edmonds, Washington. You know, you look at Kispert, you look at Timmy. We saw Deuce McBride before. Every year, their hair gets better, and our hair gets worse. We are losing ground in a hurry, my friend. What hair? I mean, the, <laughs> the biggest inspiration we've got is Shaka Smart. He left the bald brotherhood. We'll step aside for immediate timeout. Number one, Gonzaga getting a battle early from West Virginia. The Mountaineers with an early lead. Important than ever. If you are able, please support cancer research by visiting v.org slash donate. 100% of what you give goes directly to cancer research. Dan Schulman, Jay Billis, Holly Rowe, the Jimmy V Men's Classic, Bob Huggins, West Virginia, Gonzaga in game one, game two, Illinois and Baylor. What a night of college basketball here early in the season. It's hard to believe, Jay, the season started late. We all understand that, but there's been so much going on, and there have been so many games played. The season's only a week old right now, and it feels like it's been going on a lot longer than that. Yeah, we were waiting for it for so long, and uh, so grateful that it's back. We're so blessed to have college basketball back. But it's, uh, it's been fun to watch these teams. It's still obviously very early, uh, and everything's different, and everything's a little bit odd. But, man, it's been fun to watch. Aaron Cook with a foul on a three-point attempt, so Emmett Matthews Jr. is at the line for three free throws. And as we mentioned, don't forget we've got, oh, this is the Jimmy V Women's Classic. The 19th annual Jimmy V Women's Classic comes your way Friday at 7 o'clock Eastern time on ESPN and the ESPN app. Number 5, Louisville. Number 20, DePaul from Bubbleville, a place Mr. Billis is familiar with. He was there at Mohegan Sun Arena in Connecticut. You saw some. You saw a lot of games when you were in Bubbleville. Yeah, saw Villanova a couple times and, uh, and had that San Francisco upset over Virginia. And Bubbleville was interesting. Uh, 30 hours in quarantine, and they wouldn't let us out of our rooms except to go to the gym. And they're still playing games up there, right? It's basically full, a full two weeks of games to as, as many schools want to get as many games in as they can. Yeah, they'll be there another few days. And yeah. some of the teams, just like you know West Virginia, uh, there, some of the teams that were in Bubbleville had no idea who they were playing when they got there, that their games had been canceled, postponed. Some teams prepared for four different teams before they played their first game. Yeah, everybody you, dealing you think, with different situations. Yeah. If you think players' eyes glaze over for a normal scouting report, give them four, <laughs> in, one, give them four in one week. <laughs> Ayayi with a floater, and it's a four-point lead right now for West Virginia. You know, we talk about the big three off to the start they are for the Zags. Ayayi kind of gets lost in the shuffle a little bit, but he's a very effective player. And he quietly goes about his business and puts up numbers by the end of the night. Well, he's got a, a great feel for the game and length and versatility. And he's such a good defender. And he's got a name that Seth Greenberg says like he's walking across hot coals. <laughs> aye, aye, aye. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that? Exactly. Yeah. And if, if he's your fourth or fifth best player, you know you throw Nemhard in there as well. Again, when they've got their best five on the floor, I don't know that any school in the country could match up in terms of talent with the best five that the, the Zags have. Nobody can Watch match their offense. Yep. 
the this question, word rejected. Dan, yeah, the question, Dan, is whether they can match their defense and match them on the glass. That's going to be the, the real challenge and difference. How about Timmy? Fakes a little handoff, puts it on the deck, lays it in. He's got everything. And he was a, a highly sought-after recruit. You know, the first guy to offer him a scholarship was Brad Underwood, who's now the coach at Illinois when he was at Oklahoma State. Uh, can you imagine Timmy and Kofi Coburn on the same team? Well, Timmy said when he anybody. was at Oklahoma State, yeah. Oklahoma State. But when yeah. him and anybody would make a good tandem. Yeah. You know, the amazing thing is Petrushev is gone, Killian Tilly is gone. Like, they lost some great players up front, but what that's really done is just opened up the minutes and the opportunities for Timmy. Well, they always have people behind their best players. Uh, sometimes they're red shirts, maybe freshmen that, that are playing lesser roles, but they're developing every day in practice, and that's one thing that uh, Mark Few has always done with his staff is they develop players, and boy, McNeil threw yeah. blood. He, he's got blood coming out there. Yeah, he got called for the block. It's a chance for a three-point play for Kispert, and Sean McNeil is still down. The junior out of Union, Kentucky, bleeding from his forehead. And I don't know if maybe Kispert inadvertently caught him with an elbow. We'll get another look here, and right there. Yeah, he caught him with the left elbow on his way to the bucket. Now, a couple years ago, that would have been an absolute flagrant because anything that happened above the shoulders, but now it's more likely to be looked upon as just a basketball play. We'll see. They'll look at it on replay because of the result. But if your arms are more up than out and it's more of a basketball play, it's less likely to be called a flagrant. Boy, that is quite a, a blow that yeah. Sean McNeil took. A little bit slow to get up, walking off the court under his own power, but it looks like he's going to head back to the locker room. And he is upset right now, as you can see. Might need some stitches, and hopefully he'll be able to come back and play. And we are told the officials are at the monitor right now, having a look at the replay to decide, as Jay said, is this a basketball play, or does it warrant some kind of a penalty against Kisper? Now, the foul was on McNeil as a block. He didn't have position in order to take the charge. And it looks like it's and just it going to be a common foul. Yeah, has been ruled just a basketball play, so nothing on Kispert in the common to foul on a McNeil. So Kispert will head to the line trying to complete the three-point play. And that's a real change, Dan, over the last few years, that, that two, three years ago, if that sort of contact was made above the shoulders, the referees were going to call that a flagrant foul. They were so worried about head injuries and the like, but that that is not, it's not the same view of things now. And that's what Bob Huggins is asking one of the officials about right now. You think things have been good for Corey Kispert in Spokane? His team, since he got there, their record, his record, 97 and 10. How's that for a pretty good streak during your three-plus years playing college basketball? For more on Kispert, let's check in with Holly Rowe. Well, I think Corey Kispert has an unfair advantage because during the quarantine and stay-home period where people couldn't leave their homes, his dad, Craig, had built him what he called a little piece of concrete and basket in his backyard. Well, then he sent me the picture of it. Um, hello, this is about the nicest outdoor gym I've seen anybody get to play at during that same home period. Um, and not only that, but he had a pretty good bulldog defender that was helping him with some of his drills and ball handling. Literally, a bulldog. How cute is this right here? I think his footwork improved, his ball handling improved because he's never been deed up like that with that cute little bulldog. I only wish I knew its name, but really great, great video of that backyard gym that he was able to use and uh, he's coming in shooting very well you guys see his numbers and his percentages and he hasn't missed a beat and i think it's due to craig building that nice backyard gym that's awesome stuff and, and I'm, I'm sure his dog i'm sure the little bulldog had great naps each and every day after those daily workouts out of the backyard with Corey kispert they are still taking care after the injury to mcneil some blood on the court evidently under the basket so they are tending to that before they can resume the action Corey Kispert is an NBA player. I mean, he could have gone in the draft this, this last year. This next year, coming up, 21, is going to be a better draft than last year. But Kispert, I think, will be really highly valued in the NBA because he can score in so many different ways. 
A little one, two, two, three quarter court pressure now by Gonzaga. Take some time off the clock. Corner three, not there for Jalen Bridges, a redshirt freshman out of Fairmont, West Virginia. And back come the Zags on a 7 0 run. Ayayi misses the three. And Shibwe down with a rebound. Jordan McCabe is into the game. That's him with the ball right now for the Mountaineers. A six foot junior who's just been unable to get his shot going. Played more minutes last year than he's played in the early going so far this season. Good movement, good position down low, and then the ball is just taken away. I think Timmy is the one who picked the pocket of Bridges. Good offense run by West Virginia, but it was read beautifully by Gonzaga, and they converged on the ball after that little wrap around the elbow by Bridges. Suggs rejected. Ayayi a miss, and now West Virginia with a rebound, and then Suggs picking the pocket of McKay, but it's saved to the Mountaineers, so they retain possession. Ooh, and a wild play on the drive there and an offensive foul. Yeah, McCabe just not under control, needed to come to a jump stop. Anytime you get past the free throw line as a point guard, you've got to use the free throw line as a, as a stop sign. And a great play here by Suggs to knock it away from McCabe and go after it and keep it alive. Boy, the luxury for Mark Few you can play Suggs at the point. You can play him with Nemhard. You can play Nemhard at the point when Suggs isn't in the game. They're both in there right now. And, and what a gift it was for Gonzaga. Jay, as you know, it was two days before the start of the season when the Zacks found out that Nemhard had received the waiver from the NCAA and was eligible to play immediately. And right on cue, he drives and lays the ball in. Yeah, he just... Nemhard just was able to refuse that ball screen. You got to force him into that screen. That was just poor defense uh, on the part of West Virginia to allow him to go baseline. And the run is now 9 0 for Gonzaga. We're down six, now up by three. The defense by Suggs staying in front of McBride. And that's one and of the problems. Spins really inside and draws the foul. One of the problems, really, for West Virginia is their inability at times to score. That puts so much pressure on the Mountaineer defense. See right now, Nemhard, ball screen comes up, and instead of forcing him into that screen, uh, they just allowed baseline. Johnson just allowed baseline there, and that's just an easy bucket. You have to force him into that screen and force him into help. Isaiah Cottrell, number 13 for West Virginia, a freshman from Las Vegas, and a guy that Bob Huggins is very high on. He's just got some talented big guys playing in front of him, so he's had limited minutes. And Coach Huggins not looking too happy right now. 9-0 run for the Zags to take us to the under-8 timeout. Fight in the line eye of Illinois, a top-five matchup, two outstanding teams. As we take a look at tonight's Sonic Blockbuster, this is the highest Illinois has been ranked since the final poll back in 2005 when they went to the national championship game. Lost to Carolina that year. Baylor picked to win the Big 12. They would have been a one seed had there been an NCAA tournament last year and a couple of preseason All-Americans, Jay Iodesumu for the Illini and Jared Butler for the Bears. Well, Illinois has outstanding guards. Io DeSumo, one of the best closers in college basketball, a big-time scorer and so difficult to contain in the open court. But Butler's got, or excuse me, Baylor's got maybe the best defensive backcourt in the country. And you take a look at, at the way they can guard Davion Mitchell and Macy Oteague, that's going to be a real challenge for Illinois. Jalen Suggs called for the offensive foul. That's his first. Jared Butler, a preseason AP All-American. Iota Sumu, an All-American as well. And Corey Kispert, he tied with Remy Martin of Arizona State for the fifth and final spot. So, according to the preseason voting, three of the top six players in the country are playing in this event tonight in Butler, DeSumo, and Kispert. And Asaboyan just took a charge there. He had 23 charges that he took last season. Nice play by Miles McBride, just getting down into the post. Like he can score inside or out. But Dan Asaboyan, he was getting grabbed there and still was able to take the charge. Now a travel on Ayayi will give it back to the Mountaineers as they look to regain the lead. And Suggs reaching down and grabbing the back of his left ankle. And this is not good news.
Couldn't tell whether there was any contact there, but when you see where he's grabbing his foot, it really scares you. Hopefully he'll, he's okay. He slipped. His left foot skidded a couple of times, and then he tried to stop his momentum and felt something right away. And in a lot of pain. Mark Few doing the right thing there, telling his players to get back to the huddle. He doesn't need his guys standing over him. They need to move forward as best they can, even though they've got a, a teammate down. Boy, you hate to see this. Again, playing just his third game, has been one of the brightest stars so far here in the first week of the college basketball season. And remember, this guy's football player tough, right? Played football all through high school, and you can see how much pain he is in right now. Yeah, that's a good point uh, about football, Dan. Jalen Suggs knows the difference between pain and injury, and let's just hope for the best. It's impossible to know exactly what happened, but it just scares you to see the way he reacted. Well, they've helped him up, but is he able to put any weight on it at all as he tries to get off the court? And he's going to need some help. Boy, it looked like a harmless play, right? Just trying to slow his momentum, and just the left foot skidded, gave way a little bit, and hopefully it's nothing too serious. But he's really not able to put any weight on. Guys, what concerns me right there is, as the athletic trainer was there out on the floor, the way they were feeling up the back of his calf is often how they would try to see if there's been any kind of Achilles rupture. Sometimes if you rupture your Achilles, it pulls up the back of your calf after I was speaking with Brianna Stewart, who did something similarly. So hopefully that is not the case. But as they were examining him, that was one of the areas they were feeling for. I'll keep you updated as soon as we know anything. Guys, we uh, have a little technical issue. We've got, um, don't have our announcers for a second, so I will keep you posted on what's happening here. Shooting free throws right now for West Virginia as they trail Gonzaga 20 to 19. All tied up here at the Jimmy V Classic. Number one team in the country, Gonzaga, taking on West Virginia. And it's been a little back and forth as we see Jalen Suggs, the top recruit in Gonzaga history, the highest rated recruit ever being examined on the sideline after a left, what appears to be ankle issue, after slipping on the floor. Nemhart with the ball. Feeds inside to Timmy. Back out for the Zags. And she, or excuse me, Culver with a monster rebound. West Virginia led the nation in offensive rebounding last year, and they've picked right up where they left off. Another good rebound there. <laughs> West Virginia takes a three-point lead here with 6.21 to play in the first half. Drew Timmy inside working against Culver. He has yet to get going, and he is fouled. Looks like he will go to the line. Timmy, during that last timeout, kind of looking up at the scoreboard, looking at his contribution and, and wincing a little bit. He's frustrated that he has not gotten going here with just two points here in the first half for Gonzaga. Seventh team foul for West Virginia. We are here in Bakersfield House in Indianapolis for the Jimmy V Classic tonight is the first of a double header as Timmy... It's the free throw, his third point tonight. Short, here comes Miles McBride for the Mountaineers. McBride off the dribble, no. 
Culver can't rein it in, and here's Nemhart. John Zag into the front court. Nice little move and feed Ayayi with the score. Puts Gonzaga back tied with West Virginia. Miles McBride with the ball. Also a high school quarterback at Cincinnati Muller, a big powerhouse in Ohio. He feeds Culver down low, who is fouled. And they gave him the basket. Yes, I can. Welcome back, sir. Hello. Please don't leave me alone by myself. You know, every now and again, Jay and I just like to stop talking and see if the reporter's doing uh, comfortable doing play-by-play. -play. You nailed it. <laughs> Thank you. I don't think I've ever had such heart-stopping terror, but please please welcome back and take over, sir. Uh, great job by Holly. Uh, Dan and Jay back here in Charlotte had some technical issues. We have moved to a different booth here to uh, try to get back on the air. And again, the big story tonight is the injury to Jalen Suggs. We don't know the nature or severity of it. All we know is he was reaching down around the back of his left ankle, his heels somewhere there. And the only thing we know for sure, Jay, is he is in a lot of discomfort right now. Yeah, just a scary situation. And we hope, certainly hope for the best for Jalen Suggs. But the game has to go on. And West Virginia has done a very good job throughout this game of limiting Drew Timmy and limiting what Gonzaga can get to the basket. And it has been a low scoring. I think Holly Rose said before the game that West Virginia wanted to make it an ugly game. And for the most part, they've done that. One and one now coming for the Mountaineers. Up by three. Shibwe is at the line for West Virginia. Second team, all Big 12 a year ago. No much more for his physicality and rebounding rather than pure offense. And the Zags are going to get bigger as Balo comes in and says to Kispert, hey, I get the low block on, on the block out here on the free throw. You go up a little bit higher. You're not going to argue with a guy who's the size that Balo is at 7 foot and 260. Well, you mentioned Shibwe's rebounding. I mean, he's the best offensive rebounder in the country last year. He got about 20% of his team's misses. And he goes after the ball with two hands, both he and Derek Culver. Remember there was a time of the old Georgetown team, sometimes you would say, hey, their best offense is just getting the ball up on the rim and going to get it. You get a little bit of that with West, West Virginia right now. Well, that's really always been West Virginia. E even when Bob Huggins was at Cincinnati, I mean, they were a great offensive rebounding team. And, but they are really making it difficult for Drew Timmy to get what he wants down in the low post. Nothing's in rhythm right now for Gonzaga because of West Virginia. Matthews with a pretty good look, gets it back, and the lefty misfires again from close range, and now it's Nemhard, and depending on the situation involving Suggs, Nemhard becomes a much more important player right now for the Zags, certainly in this game here tonight. And his getting eligible in his transfer from Florida was such a big deal but especially a big deal with Jalen Suggs not able to go in this game, and hopefully he'll be back soon. But he's walking awfully gingerly on that left foot. Yeah, if we get a report, if Holly is able to get any, any information, obviously we will pass it along right away. Getting some taps from his teammates, but he is very cautiously making his way towards the locker room as the Mountaineers extend the lead with a three. It's now an eight-point advantage as Asaboyan knocks it down. Well, they were daring Asaboyan to shoot it. If you look at what Gonzaga is doing defensively, they're just packing the paint. They are not going out to challenge shots. Asaboyan with the block, but got the foul against Kispert. But Gonzaga was just, that was a dare defense on Gabe Asaboyan saying, we dare you to make this shot. And Asaboyan took that dare and made it. And you wouldn't expect this. West Virginia is three for seven from three-point range, and Gonzaga is one for eight, although the Zags, as many points as they've scored in the early going, actually haven't shot the three very well early on in this season as Kispert misses a free throw. It's good news for West Virginia, too, to have Sean McNeil back in the ball game after he went out bleeding from the forehead. Got it bandaged up as Kispert knocks down the second one. Seven-point lead. Mountaineers just over four minutes to go in the first half of the first game tonight from the Jimmy V Classic. Hey, 
Ball screen there by Sheedway. Frees up McBride. Offensive rebound. Culver back up and in. Right now, West Virginia is pounding the glass and owning the paint. And that's an issue for Gonzaga. They've got to get everybody on the glass, including the guards. Nemhard's got to get in there and rebound everybody. Nemhard, drive, jump, stop, switches hand, weak side rebound, Ballo, and he's headed to the free throw line for a couple. Well, as Jay mentioned, West Virginia is doing what they do best. They are crashing the boards right now. They are out-rebounding Gonzaga 22-15, to and they're converting on the offensive glass as well. They've got the lead. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by... Thank you. A nine-point lead for West Virginia. So the Zags trailing on the scoreboard. And really the, the bigger concern, I think, big picture for Gonzaga is the injury to Jalen Suggs, which did not look good. Look kind of harmless as it happened. His left foot gave way. See the little skid and slip there. And then immediately reaching down and grabbing behind his left ankle. Needed a lot of help to get off the court in a lot of pain. And again, if we get any word, we'll pass it along. And hopefully, it is not a serious injury. Yeah, just a scary situation for a, a great player and a great talent. And just hopeful that everything works out and it's not a serious injury. Nine-point lead for West Virginia, the first game of the Jimmy V Men's Classic. And Omar Ballo is at the line, and he seems to be questioning something. I don't know if it's how many shots or what the situation is. Now they got it all sorted out. Well, you don't see many teams go with the, the two real bigs out there, but Abala was out there with Timmy again, and again, Timmy's got some perimeter skills. Suggs continuing to walk very, very gingerly in the tunnel. Just the fact that he's walking is a, is a good thing. So you mentioned it, follow. Having him on the floor, they, they need him in there to rebound and need his big body. You know, they call him Baby Shaq. But Gonzaga's got to do a better job on the glass, and West Virginia's got to get the ball across half court. Which they do in time. McBride and Matthews helping to do that. Culver and Sheedway, both of the big guys are in there for West Virginia right now. They've been putting up some numbers in the first half. Culver, left it short. And there's Ballo doing just what you said, Jay, getting in there, mixing it up, coming down with a rebound. Well, he also came down to help on Culver. What a beautiful pass, and that's got to be finished by Timmy. Okay, Derek Culver went after that ball. He really pursues the basketball, just explosive on the glass. He was named the MVP of the Bad Boy Mowers crossover classic that they held in South Dakota, West Virginia beating Western Kentucky to win that tournament. There's the drive of the feed by Nemhard, and Timmy just couldn't finish. And that's about the third time tonight we've seen Timmy kind of slap his hands, clap his hands together. He's frustrated with some of his misses. You mentioned, Jay, he's shooting 71% through the first two games. He's one for nine tonight. Yeah, he has really struggled. He's, been, he's missed some easy ones. He's been bumped around. He's having to finish through contact. And some of the physical play is bothering Gonzaga a little bit now. Now, just that last little pocket pass that Kispert threw, just right down at the feet of Drew Timmy. Even if he caught it, he wasn't going to be able to do much with it. McNeil in and out. Another offensive rebound. Shibwe with a reverse. Well, how about that footwork getting around to the other side of the basket with the right hand? And Shibwe is all over the glass. He's got eight rebounds, three of them offensive. Watson, no. Culver down with a rebound. Stylistically, this is being played the way West Virginia wants it to be played, right? It's being played like a, a backyard brawl, exactly. That was not a good shot for West Virginia. Anytime you take a bad shot, it's, it's almost like clockwork. You're going to give up a, an easy one on the other end. That's and, exactly what happened. And Nemhard with a big three for the Zags to get it back within six as we go into the last two minutes of the first half. Sheebway with a cut, a little bit strong. Kispert in traffic, down for the Zags. Nice job by Watson to get in there and almost take a charge. Ah, how about the Canadian with the Euro step right there to make it a four-point game? Like quite an international play. Canada, <laughs> Europe, a lot going on. Yeah. 
next time you do a game with me where there's a Canadian, and I don't mention that he's a Canadian, we'll be the first. <laughs> Nemhard with a three, and then Nemhard with a layup. And Gonzaga needs all that the Florida transfer can give him right now. Zag's back within four. He's no Turk Broda. <laughs> This is the new Ergo Smart Base from Tempur-Pedic, and it responds to snoring automatically. So no more nudging your partner or opting for the couch. Because the Temper Ergo Smart Base is our first system that detects snoring and automatically adjusts to help reduce it. Your best sleep, all night, every night. For a limited time, save up to $500 on adjustable mattress sets during the Tempur-Pedic Smart Sleep event. Learn more at TempurPedic.com. Gonzaga medical staff continues to evaluate Jalen Suggs. They've taken him to the back of the house. They tried to have him do a few things. You can see he is able to walk there and put some weight on that. I'm being told officially from the PR folks it's a left ankle. His return to the game is TBD. But as you can see, he's struggling right there. The tournament organizers have let me know that they've worked it out with the Indiana Pacers, whose facility this is, that they can go back and use any kind of diagnostic or imaging um, facilities that they have here on site. I'll keep you posted as soon as we know more. All right, Holly, thank you. Yeah. A big story here in this game. You are looking at a Banker's Life Fieldhouse in Indianapolis, the site of the Jimmy B Classic tonight. Of course, no fans in the stands, which is the case in just about every college basketball game that has been played or is going to be played uh, for the foreseeable future. They're apparently reviewing whether or not this Nemhard bucket, it was counted as a three. They're having a look to see if it was a three or did he have a toe on the line. Looks like he's behind it. It's about as good a look as you're going to get at it. Again, rule the three on the floor, and we'll see if they keep it that way. Amazing camera work to get that close. Unless there's indisputable video evidence, the call will stand. I'm taking a good long look at it. That looks behind it. Yeah. But I think you would agree with me if it if it's so close that it takes this long. There's a good look at it too. If it's so close that it takes this long to determine. Looks like he's behind it. Doesn't that mean you, that you should probably leave the call the way that it was, that it was, that it was called? Yeah, but they you know how it is. The referees want to get every yeah. single angle and ask for every single angle so a mistake's not made. They just they want to get it right. The question is, how do you balance getting it right with getting back to play? Right. And it does look like the call's been upheld, so that's a three for Nemhard. Four-point lead, West Virginia, with a minute 35 left in the first half. And now we might have some... Condensation on the floor, some sweat on the floor, and they're going to clean that up right now to make sure that nobody slips. As long as we don't replay the condensation. <laughs> I don't think that's a reviewable play. <laughs> it's not reviewable. <laughs> McBride at the point. He's had some good minutes in the first half for West Virginia. Boy, the top of the Big 12 looks stacked. Baylor, Kansas, West Virginia. Texas is off to a great start. Texas Tech will be a good team. Ball is tipped away, and it's out of bounds. It'll stay at the center of the floor for the Mountaineers. Gonzaga coming with a double in the post from up top, and Sheepway was wide open underneath. And Culver just couldn't see over the double team to be able to get it to him. He was looking opposite when the ball got deflected. Sheepway almost had a dunk anyway. McBride to inbound, the cut inside, and Shibwe draws the foul. The art of moving without the basketball and finding some open space. Well, it's also playing screener score. You know, that was just a simple little screen for the screener action. Once you set a screen, if you're looking for the ball as Shibwe was, you have a chance to be open. That just went very good out of bounds under defense by Gonzaga. Last year, Shibwe averaging about 11 points, 9 rebounds per game. He is on the preseason watch list for the Carl Malone Award, one of 20 players, and that award is for the best power forward 
in college basketball, even though the game is transitioning to more of a positionless sport. I like the watch list. The 20 players at each of the five spots honoring some of the great players of the game, whether it's the Bob Cousy, the Jerry West, the Julius Irving, the Carl Malone, or the Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Oh, it's awesome. Yeah. I mean, positionless just means guys can do a lot of different things. You can plug them into to different spots, but heck, I still like the idea of having positions. Ayayi looking inside for Balo. Now back outside Nemhard with less than a minute to go in the half. Ten on the shot clock. What a nice job by Shibwe on that high screen. And Ayayi buries the three. Assist to Nemhard. He just makes plays, does so many things out on the floor for Gonzaga. He's limited the home run plays he used to try to make and is making the simple plays. And sometimes the simple can be spectacular. About an 11 second difference between the game clock and the shot clock here at the end of the first half. McBride waiting for the inevitable ball screen. Said Culver goes down, they get a double team on McBride and a timeout is called with five on the shot clock. Yeah, they came to double off of Bridges and McBride needed to give that ball up a little bit sooner before he got trapped. Tomorrow, we will have a Legends Classic doubleheader here on ESPN. First up at 7 o'clock Eastern time, it'll be UConn taking on USC. You can get a look at the Mobley brothers on USC, and then followed up by Florida and Boston College. Both games coming your way from Bubbleville at Mohegan Sun in Connecticut. You know, sometimes you have a general feel, Jay, when you've been around the sport as long as you and I have. You know, kind of the ebb and flow of the schedule, and this happens this week, and this happens that week. Every day, it's you know, it's like life is like a box of chocolates. Every day you figure out who's playing. There are all kinds of matchups you didn't know were coming, or as you said, were just recently created. You never know what kind of games you're going to see that night. Heck, the teams don't know what kind of t <laughs> uh, schedule they're going to be playing. You know, Mike Bray at Notre Dame put out a, a tweet the other day yeah. asking for, hey, so December 4th or 5th, this yeah. is not a drill. Anybody yes. want to play? Yeah. And he said, we'll travel within reason and we'll travel safely, he put in his tweet. You don't see that every day. A coach advertising on social media. Hey, does anybody want to play us? Three to shoot. McBride gets it off and gets the roll. It looks like Mark Few is going to take a timeout to set up the final shot of the first half. But Miles McBride is such a good player. Went to Cincinnati Moeller High School. I mentioned before, he played quarterback in, in high school just like Jalen Suggs did. Takes the ball off the dribble handoff, has got an open side, gives a little shake to Cook, and then just pulls up and shoots a soft one on the rim and goes in. He's had a really good first half. McBride's got 10 points. He's four of eight from the field, two of two from three. Remember the Big 12 all-freshman team last year. He and Shibwe leading the way with 10 points apiece for the Mountaineers here in the first half. He's such a good defender. Reminds a lot of people of a Daxter Miles type defender. Remember that backcourt, Javon Carter, Daxter Miles? Yeah. Boy, and you talked about it, whether it was that group, this group. If you don't play hard, if you don't rebound, if you don't play defense, Morgantown is not the place for you. It might be for a while, but it won't be for long. Yeah. <laughs> Final seconds of the first half. Nemhard, Kisberg. And West Virginia getting a great first half from Shibwe and Culver, the two big guys combining for 17 points and 17 rebounds. That'll get it done. A West Virginia kind of first half, and the Mountaineers with a five-point lead on a Gonzaga at halftime. Let's check in now as Holly Rowe. That's a look at what was going on after he left the game, Holly. Injury. 
No new information on that injury. They are still evaluating him and his return is TBD with that injury. But what I can tell you is it really has impacted his teammates. Before this game, we kept remarking to each other how loose and fun and laughter and Gonzaga with this very special team chemistry and energy that was just palpable in this building. And since that injury, it's like a gut punch. They're quiet. They're serious. This has really taken a toll mentally and emotionally on this team to see their young man and their teammate go down like that. We'll see if they can regroup right now. Jay, how hard is it when you're playing and one of your teammates, you know, one of your brothers goes down with what it looks like it could be a serious injury. How hard is it to put it out of your mind and play basketball? It's difficult because it scares you. And that was a scary looking injury. But yeah, that's one of the reasons that Mark Few sent the players back to the huddle while they were all standing over him. Oftentimes when an injury happens in practice, they'll send the team down to the other end and practice just to continue because you have to move on. You, you don't want to move on, but you have to. And Gonzaga trying to get a little bit more aggressive. Ball goes into the post. They are going to double to get it out of there because the big guys have done most of the damage to the Zags in this game. And underway here in the second half of our Sonic Blockbuster, number one against Zaga, number 11 of West Virginia in the first game of two here with the Jimmy V Classic presented by Corona and Andrew Nemhard, who has been coming off the bench for the Zags, now steps into the starting lineup here in the second half due to the injury uh, to Suggs and Nemhard as a lot of people know, a two-year starter at Florida so they've got about as good an insurance policy as they could have given the injury yeah, he's got nine points in this game he's been very aggressive looking for his offense this is that runner after a little bit of contact with Shibwe and back comes McBride McBride with 10 points in the first half inside to Culver a little bit too strong and Ayayi down with a rebound well, Yayi's done so many nice things in this game. The last possession when Sean McNeil came off those baseline screens, caught the ball, made him put it on the deck, and then was able to bother that shot to the point where McNeil shot an air ball. And McNeil has really struggled to get an open look in this game. Obviously got hurt earlier where blood was drawn. He had four stitches in his forehead. It's been awfully difficult for him to find any open shots. Nemhard back door, Ayayi for the layup. Boy, just beautiful. Everybody's so worried about Corey Kispert on the other end of the floor. Ayayi with a beautiful back cut. In your opinion, Jay, when you see a play like that, how often is that called? How often is that just a read and react play? No, that was called. I mean, there's, there's some read and react to it, but that was called. All the action on the left side in order to get an opening on the right. That was a designed play to take advantage of McNeil on the right side. Great bounce pass, Nemhard to Ayayi. These are two of the premier programs in America right now, and we can't wait for the second game coming up at the Jimmy V Classic. And Jalen Suggs continuing to walk around, and this doesn't mean he's coming back in the game, but Jay, if he's doing this, maybe it makes you think that it's not as serious an injury as it might have looked like it was. It's certainly encouraging to see that the medical pros at Gonzaga are letting him do what he's doing right now. So hoping for the best, not just for this game, but long term. Great pass by Drew Timmy. He finds a Yai, and the Zags are back on top. So they've come out here in the second half playing really well. Well, they're having to play a half-court game, but they've been much stronger with the ball and running their sets in the second half, not as frenzied. And you give a lot of credit to Andrew Nemhard for that. Taz Sherman with the ball right now for West Virginia, number 12. And he has been shooting the ball extremely well in the early going right now. But again, every shot maker that Bob Huggins can find gives his team a big boost. Tipped away. Matthews is fouled by Kispert. Emmett Matthews, the, the lefty, doing a good job of keeping that left arm out, even though he probably couldn't see the ball right away. Almost like a defensive back. Just putting that arm out and getting a piece of it. It was the right arm, excuse me. But putting it out, he couldn't even see the ball, just sort of felt it like a, like a lineman trying to bat down a pass. Just get it up there, and maybe the ball will run into it. There's a really great play. Two shots. 
And number three on Corey Kispert. So that's something to keep an eye on this early in the second half as Matthews steps to the line for West Virginia. When Sherman knocking down that shot on the previous possession, that was a big shot. And you mentioned he's been shooting the ball really well. He's been, he was 7 of 11 from three coming into this game. If he can stretch the defense out a little bit, that's going to open some things up for Shibwe and Culver inside. Yep, former junior college All-American. A couple of years ago, you saw Kispert head to the bench. So now no Kispert, obviously no Suggs, as we have talked about. So a bit of a different looking lineup right now for Mark Fuse, Mark Fuse Zags. The screen for the screener action to get the ball to Ayayi. Cook in the corner, inside to Timmy, got a bit of a seam, and the soft touch. If you get at the least bit out of position against Drew Timmy, he's going to take advantage of it. And Shibwe tried to reach for it, he's going to get an offensive foul because he put his arms behind him to try to lock down Timmy in the low post. And that'll be the second on Shibwe to turn it back over to Gonzaga. Boy, and he is uh, stepping up the activity a little bit in the hallway right now. I, I didn't think we'd see this after the way he was helped off the court. He's starting to look like you in your aerobics class. <laughs> <laughs> Said no one ever. <laughs> a miss by the Zags, and back come the Mountaineers with a ball and a one-point lead. McBride trying to use the screen from Shibwe. Instead, into Culver and a nice jump hook. Boy, just a beautiful play to get the ball inside and a fluid, quick move by Culver. Good movement by the Zags on offense. Nemhard the drive. Timmy switches hands. Tips it up. Has it again. Lost it. And here comes McBride. Culver just wouldn't give up on that ball. He wouldn't let go of it. Sherman with a quick three. And we got a foul going against Shibwe. And that'll be number three on Oscar Shibwe. Yeah, that's a bad call. Shibwe was just going after the ball. That's called rebounding. But a terrific move to the baseline side to get to that right shoulder. Fluid and quick. Very decisive by Derek Culver. A 6'10 lefty out of Youngstown, Ohio. And Shibwe on the bench now with three. So that brings Asaboyan back into the game now for the Mountaineers. And a foul away from the ball going against West Virginia. I think they got McBride. And West Virginia games do tend to have a lot of fouls in them. They play a very physical style of basketball. And generally, Bob Huggins likes to have a deep team, likes to use as many guys as he can. And did they get Timmy for steps? Yeah. When you get back downs like that, if they're not going to call the dislodging, oftentimes they'll wind up calling a walk on it just to, to get it over with. Well, still limping, but walking a whole lot better than he was about a half an hour ago. That's really encouraging. Three-quarter court pressure again by Gonzaga. They go 1-2-2. He did a lot of that to Kansas. It just changes the rhythm of the offense. McBride pull up eight footer. And we got a push underneath going against the Zags to take us to our first media timeout of the second half. Suggs back on the bench. West Virginia leading Gonzaga by three. Expect to see this. He is checking back into the game. Well, that's great news. And a lot of, of what we were concerned about had to do with the reaction of Jalen Suggs to the injury. But he still has a pretty pronounced limp when he's wow. go, go walking down to the baseline there. And nobody looks convinced this is the right thing. No. Hopefully it is. Somebody must have said to Mark Few, yeah, he can't aggravate whatever the injury is and it's okay to put him back in there but if you're a Gonzaga fan right now I'm sure you're watching with a little bit of trepidation as Suggs is back into the game and if you're West Virginia you want to go right after him wide open to McBride a little bit strong rebound Nemhard, and you can see Suggs filling the lane on the left side Nemhard into traffic up and in and also boy in there wasn't a ton of contact there, and Osaboyan went down looking for the charge. 
Nemhart has given some great minutes for Gonzaga in this game. Yeah, he's into double figures right now with 11. Remember, coming off the bench of the first half, but starting the second half with Suggs out at the time. He's been rock solid. Culver always wants to get back to that right shoulder, being a lefty, and on the spin move, he draws the foul. Good footwork by Derek Culver, that little almost up and under, more like a step through. Andrew Nemhard with the little shot fake left-handed drive. There was a lot of contact there. I thought it was more of a flop, but there was contact. But it's a good, I think it's a good no call. So Ayayi and Nemhard, the leading scorers tonight for Gonzaga, but they're down a point to Derek Culver and West Virginia, who's on the brink of a double-double already with 15 minutes still left in this game. Was that the first miss they've had from the free throw line? That is. They are now 12 for 13. And he missed them both. And don't know if it's because they are kind of easing Suggs back in, but he's been off the ball the first two times up the court right now with Nemhard handling. Well, with Nemhard in the game, he's more of a he can be more of a scorer. And there you see Drew Timmy setting the screen and then immediately going from screener to scorer, looking for his offense. His feet are just so good. Got off such a slow start. He really slipped that screen. Just a beautiful delivery to get the ball to the big guy. Suggs with his third assist of the night. You talk to Mark Few about Drew Timmy, and one of the first things he'll tell you about him, I mean, he loves the talent and the footwork and all that, but he says he is one of the great talkers that he has ever seen. Some of it's a little bold and brash, but Timmy himself admits, Jay, some of it is just to try to get the other guys off balance a little bit. He might just strike up a conversation with an opponent as Ayayi gets out ahead of the field. He might just say, hey, how's it doing? How you doing? How are your courses going? What's new? <laughs> like, just to try to shake up an opponent a little bit. He says basketball is 95% mental, and he's trying to get into people's heads. I remember Tommy Lloyd telling me when they recruited him that he was a great trash talker but he's also a hungry player that's got a ton of poise and he was really highly recruited yeah, he was a top 40 recruit Michigan State Louisville Arizona Texas Duke all those schools were on him Mark Few draws a comparison between Timmy and a former Zag, Kelly Olenek, in terms of his ability to do a lot of different things, step out, shoot the ball, and he is a, I won't say a very unique player, because I know your wife Wendy will text you and say, <laughs> tell Dan, you, it's, it's redundant to say very unique. So we'll just say he's a unique player. Let's go to Holly Rowe. Well, guys, Drew Timmy is what they call very creative with how he scores. He's got a lot of versatility, a lot of moves around the basket. He's good with his hands, really active, fun feet. And I asked him, how did he develop some of that? And he really credits his AAU coach. He said, my AAU coach would teach me all kinds of nifty little tricks, all the ins and outs, really creative stuff. I'm like, well, who is your AAU coach? He said, Jermaine O'Neal, who obviously had a great career here right in this very building for the Indiana Pacers. He learned some of the best big man moves from the NBA, all the tricks, all the ways to score around the basket. He also watches film of George Niang, another very creative big man scorer who's a little more undersized, but uh, he loves that label of being creative. He thrives on it. Yeah, more and more big guys want to be able to do different things, step out, handle, shoot a little bit, and there is Taz Sherman. We talked a few minutes ago about how well he is shooting the ball in the early going this season for the Mountaineers and he can really open things up for that offense because they need shot makers especially when McNeil has been struggling so much in this game but, you know to Holly's point earlier and yours about Drew Timmy and, and big man moves you know they teach the same moves to just about every big guy but not every big guy can do it right. he can do it and because he can do it Mark View allows him to do it McBride and the drive by Osaboy and counted and a foul. I love this guy. And it's not just because he's from Toronto. There you go. But that's a big part Toronto of it. Toronto right? to Arkansas. <laughs> <laughs> but he's just, he never stops moving and he never stops playing hard. And Ayayi, not a good foul because he wasn't able to stop him from scoring. I mean, that was just a, a weak foul against a strong player. 
And boy, in, in the first few games of the season, so small sample size, but doesn't it look like Osaboy and just every here, he's picking his spots, but he's looking for his offense a little bit more than he did last year. Yeah, looking to drive it. He's not a, a great shooter, but you know his his motor is what gets him points and the defense is looking for other players other threats and because he's so active i mean the ball finds active players and the ball always seems to find Osaboya. timmy double draws a double cry. team and it's going to be west virginia basketball well give credit to mcbride he came on the dribble and as timmy was turning toward his right shoulder all of a sudden mcbride's there able to knock that ball away and force that turnover Boy, one of the big things you notice, and I talked about this with Dick last night at the Kansas-Kentucky game, it's obvious, but when there are no fans in the stands, you can hear all the squeaking, you can hear all the yelling, you can hear the coaches. I mean, there's no hiding anything in the arena right now. Well, and you can hear when teams are talking on defense and when they are not. Boy, Nemhard banks home another one, and that ties the game. That was a big-time take by Andrew Nemhard. Got 13 points, four rebounds, and a couple of assists tonight for the Zags. Kispert back into the game with three fouls for Gonzaga. That ball needed to be delivered earlier. Culver was wide open underneath. He probably should have just stopped right under the basket instead of continuing out. And now a turnover. And Suggs brings it up the court for the first time since he came back into the game. Watson and an offensive foul. And that whole time, he looked like he was kind of caught in between, Jay. Didn't know how he wanted to finish that play. Yeah, just not a very good decision. Sometimes it's not there. You, you want to get out and play fast, but the defense was back and set. Timmy out as we near the under 12 media timeout. Balo is back into the game now for the Zags. And McNeil returns for the Mountaineers. Boy, McNeil is such a good shooter, but he has really struggled in this game. 0 for 6 overall, 0 of 3 from 3. He needs to get one to go down. He's going to try one here. And there it is. Look at you pulling strings from the broadcast booth. There's no announcer jinx. <laughs> Dan Shulman, Jay Billis with you here at a studio in Charlotte. Holly Rowe is on site in Indianapolis. Suggs on the baseline, not there. And Asaboyan rises up for the rebound. McBride with a good look. And Watson comes down with a rebound, and he is fouled by Asaboy, and that'll be his third. Uh, we got a good one. Gonzaga and West Virginia in a game that has been tight from the get-go. Andrew Nemhard, the transfer from Florida. Getting things done for the Zags tonight. He's got 13 helping to keep them in it. They are down to the Mountaineers by three. For our loyal sports fans who generously support life-saving cancer research and for more information or to make a donation, it is as simple as going to v.org slash donate. Dan Schulman, Jay Billis, Holly Rowe. Game one of two and a good one between West Virginia and Gonzaga with Baylor and Illinois still on deck. And you want to talk to a couple of coaches who are excited about the prospects that their schools have this year. Backdoor cut. Kispert is fouled. How about Scott Drew and the job that he has done at Baylor? Been there 18 years now. They've been ranked number one at some point three of the last five seasons. How about Brad Underwood when Io DeSuma decided to come back? They bring in Adam Miller, such a talented freshman. The Illini are loaded. That's going to be a great basketball game. A fantastic matchup between two excellent teams that are very different. Although Illinois plays outstanding defense, Baylor has, I think, the best defensive backcourt in college basketball. Well, how about, Dan, that last play that Gonzaga ran? A little backdoor against the overplay, and Oscar Shibway just got caught. Wasn't sure whether to take a charge, block the shot and wound up fouling as a result. Off the hands of Nemhard out of bounds. Good pressure by Gonzaga, but it's still West Virginia ball. Shibwe is on the bench right now for the Mountaineers. 
because he's got four fouls. This is the second, maybe third time already this year that Shibwe has had foul trouble, has not been able to play a lot of minutes. The good news for West Virginia is they've got Gabe Osaboyan who can come in and fill that role reasonably well, do a lot of things for him. Yeah, he's just not the offensive rebounder, so getting second shots and having that presence down low is a little more difficult. Looks like they got Paolo with the foul on Culver, trying to be physical just to keep him from getting to a spot. And you can see how Mark Few felt about that call. Yeah, one of the things without fans is you get to hear the whistles, and yes. there's been a lot of them. <laughs> Mark Few has led the Zags to the NCAA tournament every single year that he has been the head coach there. 601 wins, 124 losses, a winning percentage of almost 83% in his career at Gonzaga. Made it to the national championship game a few years back in 2017 and certainly has the talent to make a run very, very deep into the NCAA tournament this year. And no coach in the history of the game that has amassed 600 wins has caught as many fish as Mark Few has caught. <laughs> Boy, no, that's some research. I did a lot of prep for this game. I didn't see that anywhere. Does he love fishing almost as much as he loves basketball? Loves fishing the outdoors. He's quite an outdoorsman. And did they get Watson for the stutter step there after a great feed from Nemhard? So no bucket, and Mark Few not too happy with that. A missed opportunity there for the Zags. You know, that, that's one of the things about Mark Few is he, he's been a believer at Gonzaga from the very beginning. A, a lot of people, myself included, had talked to him about, hey, you know, you might want to think about taking this job or that job. And he's like, no, I'm not interested. He says, I, I, but you could win one somewhere else. He goes, I think we can win one here. He's believed that from the very beginning. He's got great balance in, in Spokane, and uh, he takes advantage of where he lives his great family great community and he's not going to mess with with being happy and, and as you well know his philosophy is he'll play anybody anywhere anytime in this or any other season they've already played kansas and auburn they're going to play baylor on the weekend they've got a game coming up against iowa because the west coast conference although it's a good conference and probably a better one now than it was this year than it was last year they're just not going to get a big 10 big 12 ac level of competition once they get into conference play so he goes nuts in November December yeah and it's fun like he plays a style that he wants to watch and he plays a style that he would have liked to have played you know when he was a young player but you know he went to the University of Oregon a lot of people thought well maybe maybe someday he'll take the Oregon job or UCLA or all these other places and he's been offered a number of different jobs and I think I think he would be a great NBA coach but he's not interested in moving uh, he, he's really enjoyed his time at Gonzaga, and why not? I mean, with the amazing success they've had there. Well, as you said, not messing with happy. That's that's one of the best life philosophies a guy can have, and he's certainly got that down to a science. And he recruits great guys. Yeah. Like, they're not just great players, but they're great guys. Nearing the midway point of the second half in game one of the Jimmy V Men's Classic, presented by Corona, and it has been tight throughout. West Virginia currently leading by one. Boy, this Gonzaga defense just packed in. Sherman rises up for a jumper. Not there. Offensive rebound. Osaboyan in a fresh possession now. McBride from 16, a little bit strong. Until West Virginia can prove it over the top, it's going to be tough to score. Boy, does Kispert do that well. We have seen already this young season crossovers, and he's just got a knack for getting around that one defender on his way to the goal. Well, as you mentioned, he's got that Euro step. He's got a step back, a shot fake. He can shoot it. There's nothing he can't do as a guard on the basketball floor. Loose ball to McNeil. Had a wide open look at a three. Couldn't knock it down. And it'll be Osaboyan who called for the foul. And I think that's number four on him. And that wasn't a good foul, just it was dead over the top. And just a terrific move to get past McBride, get to that right hand and finish. You know, Kispert can finish above the rim. But as his game has developed, I'm telling you, the development of that hair, there was no way he needed a headband his first two years at Gonzaga. It, it's something in the program there. They, they do hair as well as anybody, yeah. except for Rivio. Derek Rivio. He didn't do the hair. No, he, 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 he had our hair. Yeah, he couldn't do it. Holly's got more. 
Well, guys, I actually followed up with Corey Kispert on why the headband this year, and he blames the coronavirus. He said, you know, early on in the quarantine, all the barber shops were closed, his hair got long, and then he kind of liked how it looked long. So but then I'd go work out, and it would fall in my eyes, so he's going with the headband. My only true disappointment is that Drew Timmy's been rocking one of his first two games. They were going to be the headband of brothers in my book, but Timmy didn't wear it tonight. I'm wondering, you know, if he didn't play as good tonight as he did in the first two, maybe he'll bring the headband back. Are you taunting Timmy us? Said, are you taunting us I'm with not. that story, the, the, the hair in the eyes thing? <laughs> I'm, my eyes are starting to water. I'm sorry, but Drew Timmy <laughs> said, you know, Kispert wasn't the first one to wear a headband. I rocked one back in the sixth grade. He said, when I saw that Kispert was going to wear one, I was like, man, I got to pull out mine. I, so I'm, I just want Drew to wear it next game. That's all I'm lobbying for. I think they look better when they're the headband brothers. Here's what I really want to know. Jay, back in your youth days, high school, AAU, maybe even at Duke, although I don't think it would happen at Duke, did you ever play in a basketball game wearing a headband? No, no. Um, those are the good old days when I had the choice of wearing one, and I, I wouldn't look like Slick Watts. <laughs> I had magnificent hair. Yes, I've heard that. I would have put Timmy, Kispert, all these guys to shame. Isaiah Cottrell at the line for West Virginia, a freshman from Las Vegas who went to Huntington Prep in West Virginia last year. And with Shibwe and Osaboyan both on the bench with four fouls, these are big minutes right now for the freshman. And Bob Huggins is very high on him. You know, one thing that didn't happen this year as Timmy backs his man down, Jay, no exhibition games this year because of the virus. So a lot of these freshmen, their first real opportunity to play was in some big-time games at the beginning of the season. Yeah, a lot of difficulties, but the last couple times down, watch, watch Culver here reaching at the very end. He reaches in instead of just making Timmy finish over the top. He's picked up two fouls doing the exact same thing. One with his left hand on that last possession, the other with his right hand. He's shaking his head as if as if he didn't foul. But both, both of those he fouled just by reaching at the last second instead of keeping your hands up and you've got position. Make the offensive player finish over the top. Well, the news keeps getting worse for the Mountaineers because he's got four. So Bob Huggins right now, you can see Shibwe getting set to check back in. It looks like Coach Huggins will try to rotate his big guys in and out of the game and try to keep them from getting that fifth foul. Just try to use up everything that he's got. McCabe, no. Good rebound by Culver. And it's out of bounds still to the Mountaineers. Bob Huggins thought that Culver got fouled there and did his best to jump there. It almost looked like he was really trying to jump. If you wanted to see an injury, that could have been one in a heartbeat. So Culver, who's got four, he sits. Shibwe, who's got four, back into the game for the Mountaineers. Pass deflected. cottrell has got it. And then he is fouled. They got Suggs reaching in. Sounded like he got all ball. Uh, and so far so good for Suggs since he has returned to the game he's been in there several minutes hasn't had a huge impact on the game since he's come back but he's moving around okay and obviously feeling good enough to play rattles out you're wondering now where is West Virginia scoring going to come from Suggs with a rebound, kicks it back out, but he throws it away, stolen by Cottrell. Well, he was muscling McNeil in there. He should have just gone up with that rebound. He had McNeil in a bad spot. Shibwe was there maybe to give a shot block opportunity, but you want to go up with it anyway. Good Four. position by Shibwe. He just locked down Timmy in the middle of the lane. And a nice little interior feed there by Cottrell to get the assist. And West Virginia back within one. Eight minutes to go. Great feed at the other end and the lay-in for Kispert. A good find. Lombard has had some great minutes in this game. That's his third assist to go along with 13 points. McCabe got caught in the air and almost threw it away. Sherman. Oh, what a pass. What a beautiful play by Taz Sherman in the bucket for Shibwe. Timmy running the floor at the other end and a chance for three. And that'll be all for Shibwe. 
Just got outrun by Drew Timmy. Just beautiful transition by Gonzaga. And a lot of shoulder shrugging and head shaking by the West Virginia big guys. A good one between West Virginia and Gonzaga. Timmy running the floor. Shibwe fouls out. The Zags have the lead. Well, Drew Timmy in the second half, without the headband, much to the chagrin of one Holly Rowe, has been excellent. Four of five in the second half. He's got the pick and roll game to facing up and then making a post move, little drop step, picking up the foul and completing the three-point play, and then running the floor and picking up the fifth foul on Oscar Shibwe, a more active and more confident Drew Timmy in this second half after a really rough first half. Like, what is it, Dan, one for nine in yeah. the first half? A very un-Drew Timmy-like first half. But the second half, it's been the guy we saw in the first couple of ball games that was shooting 70% and averaging 26 and a half points per game. And not only has he scored a lot better, played a lot better in the second half, he's also drawn a ton of fouls to the point where Shibwe has fouled out of the game. And we're only guessing, but maybe the lesson that he's being taught right now is use your head. Like, if you're going to foul somebody, make sure you need to do it. Make sure it's a good one. Culver's had a couple he'd like to have back. Shibwe's had a couple he'd like to have back. Yeah, a couple of them were just bad decisions. The last two fouls by Culver were just reaches at the end of a defensive possession when the reach wasn't going to do him any good except to get a foul. Good Sherman drive. with a drive. Boy, that's nice. Look at the transition difference, 19 to 2. Bob Huggins told Holly earlier what the stat sheet tells you, but when you watch Gonzaga on film, they just thrive off of their full court game, whether it's off of a miss, sometimes off of a make. They get the ball out quickly, and they want to score in the first 10 seconds of the shot clock. How about Sherman fouled on a three-point attempt by Ayayi? Point well, isn't Sherman Jay looking like he's going to be an awfully big factor for the Mountaineers this year? Well, especially if he shoots it this well. You know, he was really better than advertised, and he's been their most consistent shooter in practice their first three games. And he's probably their best creator off the dribble. You know, his ability to put the ball in the deck and make something happen without the offense being run for him. He's a senior from Missouri City, Texas. Comes into this game tonight averaging almost 12 points per game through the first three and having a pretty sizable impact in this one as well. Ayayi will sit. You mentioned that Sherman's a, a junior college player. He went, he went to a school I just hadn't heard of. I've never heard of Collin College. Had you heard of that? Before? I have not. I've heard of most ju uh, junior colleges. I haven't heard of that one. Put up some big numbers, 26 points per game a couple of years ago. That is Junior College All-America. And he has given the Mountaineers the lead. Nemhard shakes one defender, gets another one in the air and scores. Well, just great, playing with great pace. Coming off a screen and then getting into the middle, staying low. But that shot fake, that was a big time play. A lot of production out of Andrew Nemhard tonight. Culver inside, too strong. Boy, he had a step and an angle on Timmy. Now Timmy's going to get a bucket. Yes, he is. Zags back on top. Boy, Timmy just consistently runs right down the middle of the floor. Rim run. And Culver was on his back because he had gone down after that shot attempt. Pass off the back of Watson, turned over. Numbers for the Zags. Lob and the finish for Kispert. Boy, every mistake that Jordan McCabe makes turns into points on the other end. For West Virginia was up, and Gonzaga just explosively takes the lead by four. You know, Andrew Nemhart just turning down the ball screen and then just snaking through the defense, getting by Cottrell, and then a terrific pass by Watson to Timmy running the floor. Boy, Nemhart's been terrific. And talk about Kispert and his explosive leaping ability as a 6'4 guard. And the Zags back out to a four-point lead at the line now for West Virginia, junior Jordan McCabe. 
Again, Illinois and Baylor still to come in the second game tonight. It'll be a little bit longer of a gap between games than it normally is in this kind of a doubleheader. There is a lot of sanitizing that has to be done to keep everybody as safe as possible. So we're estimating 45 minutes to an hour before the second game starts. And it is one you won't want to miss. Baylor and Illinois, number two and number five in a big-time matchup. I don't know about you, uh, Io DeSumo to me is one of the most compelling players to watch in college basketball. All the different things that he can do, all the different ways he can beat you. Well, especially in transition, he's such a, a great end of game, end of clock shot maker. You know, that play he made at the end of the game against Ohio U, you know, it's Jeff Bowles' team, former Ohio State assistant. Ohio U had a great opportunity to win that game. Yep. Culver, a little high-low as he gets it inside. Cottrell with a turnaround jumper. Nicely done by the freshman. All he needs is experience. 6'10", three-point range, can bounce it, passes it pretty well. And in there because some of the more experienced bigs have some foul trouble, or in the case of Shibwe, have fouled out. Timmy around his man, can't finish. Oh, and Culver let the rebound get away, and Ayayi is there to clean it up. Hardly ever see that. Culver goes after the ball with two hands and just couldn't corral it. How about Ayayi now with 19 and now an offensive foul against Sherman who can't believe it. That's a terrible call. There is no way that Timmy was there. Bob Huggins knows it, but... Ugh. That's a terrible call. It's embarrassingly bad. He goes right in. There's no yeah. way. Yeah, clearly still moving. Embarrassing. Suggs. And the rebound down to Culver. Has it taken away? Ayayi with the save. Kispert. And give Ayayi a lot of credit for making that play. That's what he does. He just he makes the play that you need at the time. He's just always around the ball. We said before, the ball finds the most active players. And Cottrell with a quick three. Culver off the glass and good. Boy, he finds a way to get back to that left hand, doesn't he? He's just tough. He may be a little unorthodox on the offensive end, but he never stops playing. And he's been playing for a while with four fouls. Yep. Kispert shakes Cottrell. A little bit short. Had a good look at it. Couldn't finish. Culver down with a rebound. A big possession here. West Virginia needs to get some points on the board. Sherman. And a block is the call on Timmy. He's probably in the restricted arc. He was more there on that one than the one before. So we'll step aside with 3.22 to go. West Virginia trying to beat number one, but the Zags have played much better here in the second half. Derek Culver and company battling hard to try to stay with the Zags into the final minutes. He is jogging and a little bit more, a little bit more, and eventually he checked back into the game early in the second half, which was somewhat surprising given how it looked when he suffered the injury. And Jay, I don't think he's come out since he went back in. No, it's so great to see him back on the floor, and I know he's not playing the same way as before he got injured. But look at the balance scoring of Gonzaga. Ayayi, 19 points. He's also got six rebounds. Corey Kispert, 18. Drew Timmy, his second half, just fantastic with the way he's played. And Andrew Nemhard came in after Suggs got hurt and was such a calming influence on the Gonzaga team, handling the ball, running the team. You know, nobody had to worry about anything with him in control of the ball. Are they the most talented group, in your opinion, in college basketball? Yes, the most talented offensive team, without question. And I think their defense is good. They can mix things up. They've got some versatility. You know, Suggs gives them that just explosive athleticism in the backcourt that few teams have. I mean, they've compared him to Jeremy Pargo, but as a freshman, I don't... I don't think Jeremy Pargo was this explosive or this good. And Nemhard drawing a foul on Asa Boyan, so he has fouled out of the game. That'll be the second Mountaineer who fouls out of the game tonight. You know, this is a different West Virginia team than we've seen 
several years ago when it was Press Virginia. Mm -hmm. They're a bigger team. They're not the, the kind of team that's going to force a ton of turnovers. They're more an offensive rebounding team and make it a difficult, more of a containment pressure team. So they're going to have to get out and try to force some turnovers because they, they've lost an awful lot that it's had to go to the bench because of fouls. Boy, they got to find a way for their big guys to stay on the floor a little bit more. They're too good to be on the bench, and Cottrell's played great. He's going to be a very good player, but not having Shibwe and not having Osaboyan down the stretch in this kind of a game really hurts. Yeah, it's just a question of playing as hard as they play, playing disciplined defense. Saturday, Justin Fields and Ohio State are in East Lansing to take on a Michigan State squad coming off a big upset of previously unbeaten Northwestern. Saturday noon Eastern on ABC and the ESPN app. Five-point lead, Zags, 3-10 to go. It's that little pressure took so much time off the clock. Now there's 15 seconds to go on the shot clock when West Virginia finally gets into some offense. A little slice cut and a quick post. Culver double teamed. Cottrell at the elbow. Got to take the shot and he knocks it down. And Bob Huggins was very upset on that double team that they didn't get a foul call. Pat Adams talking to him about it. He had a good point there, but oftentimes stepped out of bounds there. But yep. oftentimes the officials aren't interested in listening. They have no choice without fans. <laughs> so you don't see Bob Huggins hop out of his stool no. late night as often as you do no. during a game. <laughs> You know, and Bob Huggins can get his point across without raising his voice. So I would imagine when he raises his voice, he really gets his point across. Well, what's funny is, is he, Frank Martin, uh, you know, they, they, they come across sometimes as being being gruff and tough guys. And they are. I mean, they, they're tough guys. But they're really kind of teddy bears. Yeah. Bob's got a lot of teddy bear in him. Yeah, well, he's the huggy bear. How about Nemhard and the night that he is having right now for the Zags? Culver, and again trying to get it back to that strong side to the right shoulder, and he draws the foul. So tough to deny him that low post position. You really have to play on top of him so that he can't just duck in like that. Easier said than done, obviously. Number four on Timmy with a minute 57 to go. Boy, and every miss so costly right now for West Virginia. And they've done a great job at the line overall tonight, but a costly miss there. The Mountaineers are 24 for 28 at the line tonight. Yeah, it's kept them, kept them close. But, boy, this says a lot about Gonzaga, that this type of more half-court game, more physical, they can win and, and compete a number of different ways. It doesn't have to be a pretty game for Gonzaga to put themselves in a position to win. What a pass. Wow. Nemhard into Timmy. Magnificent. He, he has been outstanding. Yep. And again, had to step up huge after the injury to Suggs and just has kept on playing great here throughout the second half. I think the Gonzaga coaching staff was happy when that waiver went through. Oh. And again, just two days before the start of the season. Now Culver dribbles it off his leg, and it's starting to get away from the Mountaineers here in the last couple of minutes. Smart decision by Suggs to pull that out. Run some clock and then get the shot you want at the end of the clock and limit the possessions in the game for West Virginia to be able to mount a comeback. Final minute. Nemhard, another great pass, and Ayayi lays it in. Just a beautiful cut by Ayayi. The dribble was coming his way. His defender turned his head, and he just went right to the rim. Sherman has to put up a three. It won't go, and a rebound in traffic by Culver, who is fouled. If it's Timmy, he's done. This is just a fantastic pass. Two playing one. McNeil needed to be in the middle of the lane. I think he was worried about a skip pass. And then Sherman turned his head, guarding Ayayi in the corner, and he knew it. 
as soon as he saw that pass go, he knew that he was out of position and it was going to be a layup. Timmy sits down with 40 seconds to go. Had a great second half. Well, this is a, a tough, hard-fought win for Gonzaga in a, a game that is difficult to play with this kind of physicality against a team that can really rebound and turn it into a half-court game. Seven-point lead. Well, they got a lot of ball handlers out on the floor right now for the Zags. And they'll use as much of the clock as they can on this possession, or maybe not. Suggs with a miss and down with a rebound, Cottrell. Ahead to Culver, who lays it in and makes it a five-point game. And he got fouled, too. It just didn't get called. And a walk. Boy, that was a foul. It should have been called. And a timeout with 18.4 seconds to go. West Virginia got it from nine down to five, but if Gonzaga goes on to win this game, the player of the game, Jay, might be Andrew Nemhart. After the injury that forced Jalen Suggs out of the ball game for a period of time, Andrew Nemhart came into the game and really calmed this Gonzaga team down. He has been absolutely spectacular. 19 points, 8 of 14 from the field. He's rebounded. He's got five or six rebounds, six assists, only a couple of turnovers. He's had a steal. He's controlled the game in the half court and has just made solid play after solid play, making smart decisions off of screen roll situations. He'll just blast off it. He changes speeds. He played a lot of really good half-court basketball at Florida and he's continuing to improve since he's transferred to Gonzaga. He also got an opportunity Jay last summer to play for Canada's senior national men's team. How often do we say that this guy played in the under 18 or the under 19? He played for the senior national men's team of the World Cup in China. He didn't start or anything but he got you know 8, 10, 12 minutes a game against some of the best international players around the world and that can only help you when you come back to college. Isn't that basically Gonzaga North, the Canadian yes. team? Kelly Olenek, Kevin Pangos, Kyle Wilcher? Yeah. It's a bit of a pipeline uh, for Mark Few. You know, all those players go back, play together in the summer, and one says to the other, hey, what's it like playing there? How's that Few guy? And Excellent they just keep fishing. on coming. Excellent fishing in Canada. That's right. true. <laughs> <laughs> Got to get a quick score here. Boy, not, a good, not a good foul by Gonzaga. And so West Virginia down by five, 18 seconds to go with a chance to narrow the gap a little bit more without time coming off the clock. But boy, there have been some big misses. Culver has played very hard in this game, but he has struggled at the free throw line. Yeah, he's missed three in a row now. And overall, West Virginia shot it really well. But you make both of these and you have a one possession game. Four-point game, 18 to go, more pressure. And they'll put Kispert on the line. Kispert, an excellent free throw shooter. There's not much he's not excellent at. Or should he said at, at, at which he's not excellent? <laughs> should I have said there's not much at which he's not excellent? That's okay. That's not a flagrant. That's a, we'll, we'll, that'll be like a flop warning. We'll give you a warning on that. That's a mistake up with which you will not put. <laughs> Jimmy V Men's Classic presented by Corona. Go to v.org slash donate to find out more about how you can help fund cancer research. In support of the V Foundation, this is V Week here on ESPN. West Virginia needs to get to the rim here. And if you come off a shooter, then kick it out, but you got to get to the rim. McBride is trying, and it's swatted away by Suggs. How about that? With the injury and all, getting up off the ground for the rejection. An element that not many teams have. Your point guard has the explosiveness to go up and block a shot above the rim. 
Tough one, but they got to get a shot up. Missed by McNeil, and that should just about do it. The Mountaineers will let the clock run out. They fight hard. They do a lot of good things, but in the end, it's Gonzaga that wins the game as two good friends embrace on the court in the aftermath of this game. The Zags beat the Mountaineers 87-82. Don't forget, we've still got Illinois and Baylor coming up here for the second game of the Jimmy V Classic. Let's send it back to the studio now along with LaFonso Ellis and Seth Greenberg. Here's Reese Davis. Welcome.